Welcome to Oaken Bros. This is Eric. And I'm Michael. Today we have on Mike McCormick, former head of the GBTA and current founder of the Travel Again Project. Thank you for coming on, Mike. Thanks for having me, guys. And apparently the new wide receiver for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles because the Eagles are not doing well. So they've just recruited Mike. Uh, That's right. Yeah, as a new QB. Yeah. Or, yeah. Heavy injuries on the uh, receiving core. Um, it's, it was either that or offensive line. And um, I'm, I'm going to stick with receiving core. You guys still want a Super Bowl. It's fine. I mean, you're two years away. You want a Super Bowl. Yeah. It yeah. could be worse. It could be I'm, worse. You could be, you could be a Jets fan, right? Well, that's true. I'm not a I'm not a Jets fan. My son, we went to a training camp one day. I mean, I am a Jets fan, but like I'm not like a diehard Jets fan. I'm actually a Tampa Bay Buccaneers fan. No bullshit. Not since Brady's been there. But I've watched every snap of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers for the last 20 years. Are you kidding me? Wow. Um, never been to Tampa Bay. Don't know anything about Tampa Bay other than the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And when they won the Super Bowl with Gruden, that was like one of the best nights. Yeah, of my life. But, that was a pretty improbable year that they pulled that off. It that was, was, uh, was with Brad Johnson as a QB, nonetheless. Yeah. But anyway, this is not a this is not a football show because I see Eric. I'm reading Eric's lips. <laughs> I could talk football for three hours. I'm, what I'm going to tell both of you guys, I'm going to tell the Michaels in the room, uh, don't quit your day jobs. Oh, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So what I wanted to start with was the Travel Again Project. What right. is it? You know, how can the travel industry get involved? How can everybody help? And what is your goal with the Travel Again Project? Well, I'll tell you, it, it started the the kind of the idea, the kernel of the idea around Travel Again started back in the beginning of summer. Um, my business partner, longtime business partner and I, uh, Ed Silver, started talking about things in general. And, you know, as everyone did, I mean, we're just we looked at the, the devastation and the, the just uh, of the industry and, you know, transactions are down, well, to zero and then kind of climb back to something short of, you know, down 85 percent from last year. And, you know, it, it just the, the, the devastation, you know, to the entire industry and and trying to think about well, what could we do, you know, to help or to get back in some way. Um, I've been working on, you know bunch of industry projects and things that I really, you know, enjoy doing from a business perspective. But it, it really, it, again, I made, had a long career in the industry, really enjoyed it. And we we're just trying to think about a way we could help. Also started getting calls from some industry leaders saying, you know, there's a, there's a void here, you know, we're, we're struggling, you know, maybe it's time to, you know, get back into this somehow. And, you know, I, and again, I, I kind of, Put it off only for a little bit, only because you, I didn't want to try to do something that would um, disrupt the efforts that were out there. Um, and certainly, you know, everybody is not from lack of trying and a lot of uh, hard work to try to both from the individual brands, like trying to basically just do what they can do to salvage whatever part of the business they can and, you know, try to position a, a way to get through this. Um, and, and live to see a point of where recovery could begin. And then for the folks working in the, you know, the trade side of the industry side of the business, you know, really trying to represent their constituencies, you know, you, you don't want to get in the way of anything they're doing too, because again, a lot of smart people, but, you know, trying to apply, apply the resources to make a difference. So we kind of like step back from it all. And probably by the end of the summer, we started to realize that it came to the conclusion that you know, the thing that was really missing was more of an overarching way that we're tying together a lot of these initiatives throughout the industry. And as a travel industry, I would say we're, we have, we don't have a very good history in terms of our ability as an industry in total to pull together. We're yes. the world's largest industry. We, you know, we, look, travel drives the economy in, in, in both from a leisure and a business travel perspective. It's vital to everything. And it touches every industry, but yet we're still pretty fragmented the way we approach things as an industry. And some of that's just our, it's just who we are. It's the way we, we've evolved as an industry. And, you know, and frankly, there's so much critical mass even within the different sectors, you know, airline, hotel, car, cruise, et cetera. But even just among the types of travel that, you know, it's rare that you maybe need to have a more holistic view. But when everybody's transactions are down 85 and 90 percent, I'd say probably a pretty good time to maybe address the issue, right, and, and start to do something. So I started having more let's evolved, kind of did a little, as you do, a little put together a little kind of pre-pitch kind of, you know, uh, presentation of a few slides just to say, okay, you know, 
would you support this? And start talking around to the same group around to industry leaders and saying, okay, is this worth doing? And I'm not talking about financially because look, everybody, everybody should be putting every last dollar they have into either helping to you know, solve the problem or save one more job or whatever they need to do. It's not about funding. It's more about, you know, is this worth putting our time into? And, you know, the resounding answer we got back was yes. And, it, and a lot of it, again, because as an industry, if we could find a way to prioritize some of the key things that we think will help, help in both what I would call this pre-recovery mode we're in, because until vaccines are, you know, basically uh, developed and distributed in any sort of fashion, we're still going to be in a mode of kind of really try in what I would call pre-recovery mode before we can put go into place where we can try to accelerate, uh, you know, a true recovery of not just the industry, but the economy in general. And so we've got this like window right now to do some things that will, could help us short term, but really help us long term. So that when we can get into a recovery, how fast can we accelerate that recovery, right? It's not about, a, it's not, it's, it's about right now. I mean, right now it's about how can we get funding to serve, so businesses can survive? How can we do some things maybe with, you know, testing and other things that would help specifically apply that might help people really uh, feel better about traveling, feel more confident about traveling if they need to. And then get ready for a day when we can really return to traveling again for both business and leisure. When do you think that day is going to come? I think we're about, well, optimistically, we're probably looking at the middle of next year. Um, more, you know, probably later, I would say, you know, third quarter, fourth quarter next year is when we'll, you know, hopefully begin to really get back to it. But the, again, the other thing too, and this comes back to what, what we're defining as the purpose and what has, we, you always have to have something that ties everything together, right? Well, what's your primary mission? In our case, our primary mission is traveler confidence. Because if you really think about it, if you boil it all down, you say, look, what's that one thing? The, um, you know, uh, you know, what, what's the one thing that you want to like, really the elevator pitch, what you want to do, uh, you know, what's, what's your going to, what is it that's going to make the most difference? It's improving traveler confidence. If you look through that lens uh, across everything that everybody's doing now and even after the recovery starts and as we go through it, and you say, we just all want to do that. And the, the theory is like that rather than helping my individual brand, helping my individual sector, if we all focus on this holistic need to, to improve traveler confidence and make business decisions around it and set our priorities as an industry about this, We'll, we'll, it's rising tide. We'll, we'll, we'll get the transactions coming back. We'll sustain a recovery. We'll get the, we'll elevate the entire industry and then everybody wins. Look, if an industry is down 10 or 20%, yeah, you can say, well, I'm going to focus on more, you know, more on my company's needs or it's about like how to, like a little more from a competitive perspective. But when your industry is decimated the way ours has been, you know, it's all hands on deck with, with common mission and purpose. If, if you're focused on market share right now or how am I going to take business from one area and, and put it into, you know, my sector, like, forget it. You know, you're, 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 if you're playing you the long game. You nailed you, it. You definitely nailed it. There is no competition in a pandemic. No. And I think, Pete, I think the sooner companies can see that, that if we all stick together, yeah. everybody is going to be better for it. Yeah. And that's very hard as travel suppliers you know yeah. it, it's it's hard not to go back there and say but you know what we have is the secret sauce what we have is special you know blah 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 yeah, when, when in their method are right i gotta are, i gotta, yeah. I gotta tell you real quick speaking just from our square one square foot and that's really all where we're coming from we had someone on facebook um actively like go after us because we put dividers in the cars and not only just like go after us but say like you know um, you're wrong and you know, he, you're stupid. I'm paraphrasing, but like, you know, th it's the dumbest thing anyone could ever do. And like, he actually, uh, he actually apologized. We weren't looking for an apology. We frankly didn't care. We said, you run your race, dude, we're going to run our race to us. We feel it's more important to put every precaution in the car. Right. Even if it, even if it, if it only helps 2%, it's still 2% that, that actually helps. So, but this guy, well, he just real quick, he apologized. And I said, you know, we weren't mad at you. We were a little perplexed that like you turned this into something political. Right. Like, and I'm not talking about right. politics like Republican versus Democrat. I'm talking about like, you know, what's 
what's the for the safety? Yeah. Right. What's for the safety of the passengers? Who the hell are you to think that you know dividers are wrong? Right. Okay. You know, like we're not asking your opinion. So are the airlines on the same page? Like, are they are, are they all following the same set of protocols, or is each well, one kind of doing their own thing? Well, so so now here's here's a that let's dig in the airline space so that the place to start because you know frankly I mean it, you know we all rise and fall with with the fate of the airlines for sure. Yes, yes, so that, that but, the airlines so, in Disneyland. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so two two things to think about. To, and when I say that, I say yes, that's that's a true statement. But that doesn't mean that what we do should be with about the airlines to the exclusion of the rest of the industry. You know this idea that you know the old trickle down you know phrase, but like. It doesn't work that way. I mean, we have to look at all sectors of the industry and say, again, how do we raise everybody up in this equation? I mean, you know, honestly, I mean, like from just from perspective of, you know, the, the here in the U.S., you know, the airlines have been obviously working hard to go get, you know, funding billions of dollars to, to get relief, to keep jobs in place. But I mean, I would say, you know, just imagine the power of the entire industry had gone in and asked for as collectively and said, this is what we need and we need to allocate you know a big majority of it to you know the the airlines to keep them going and to flying essential routes and doing the things we need to do even if there's you know five people on a plane in these you know on these routes to these markets we can't afford to have air service shut down in our country uh to you know to to all the critical markets secondary tertiary markets etc so you could say well okay you know that's important but you know should we've been allocating a portion of that through you know, around a thought through strategy of where we could get this testing mode going faster, you know, pre-flight testing, pre-flight temperature checks, you know, negotiating with TSA and the airports and the airlines to come up with who's going to fund uh, that those processes, right? And how are we going to fast track them, test them and fast track them? You know, those types of things trickle down, like, no, like actually an allocated amount that we were focused on. What are we doing for hotels? What are we doing for TMCs? What are we doing for ground transportation? There's no one, excuse me one second, Mike, there's no one size fits all for the airlines, right? Like the, the heads of the airlines didn't come together and go, okay, we need to sanitize. We need to do this. We need to do that. Right. Every, well, every airline was doing whatever they wanted. Somewhat, but I think again, there, you know, between A4A here in the States, IATA globally, I mean, there's a lot of, there is. I mean, there is a te I think they're, within their community, they're trying to coordinate. I mean, ultimately, yes, they still are very much looking out individually for themselves. I mean, sure. But I mean, yes, there is. And so here's the point. Now, IATA more recently had just come out with, you know, what they think are the priorities to really what they're saying, kind of save the airline industry in terms of pushing this, you know, pre-flight, you know, testing and making that the cornerstone. And, and when I looked at that, I said, you know, I'm saying like, okay, First off, you know, as an industry, we have to be convinced that's it. But if that's it, then as an entire industry, in terms of what are the airline priorities, let's put that into a prioritization that, you know, we can drive throughout the industry and have everyone get behind it because we'll all benefit from that working, right? Well, they'll get more people on planes, more people in destinations, more people in cars, more people in hotels. I mean, it's logical, but for some reason as an industry, we don't, we're not, we're just not driving that level of coordination because, you know, honestly, part of it, there's no one who's trying to do that. And if some small way we can get that started and really start to get that kind of thinking around what we're doing. And again, back to traveler confidence. I mean, one of the things we're trying to do is, and we've got research in the field to start this, is literally start tracking traveler confidence levels, like for both business travelers and leisure travelers, by market, by, you know, and start pulsing this all the time. And let's look at these initiatives and tie it back to the hard stats. Is this working? So and you said something before too, which I, you know you're starting to get at about the, the perception part when you're getting criticism about doing things and you kind of, it's like, you know, at this point, I, and I've heard some of this back, like there are other things with, okay, let's, let's tackle a lot of, like the elephant in the room, the, the middle seat on airplanes. Uh, you know, to me, it's like, it doesn't, if you use all the cleaning techniques, all the, all the things you do with air filtration and you run definitive tests and tell me that it doesn't matter that I'm sitting next to the person, if everybody's been screened and everybody's like that and I, all this stuff is in place. I'm telling you right now that if I'm getting, I don't care if I'm wearing a hazmat suit, if I'm sitting shoulder to shoulder with a stranger on an airplane, 
Yep. It lowers my confidence in traveling. Yes. So, and whatever short-term revenue the airlines can get by putting somebody in that middle seat aggressively and filling flights like, like it's 2019, I think that is ill-advised. Yep. And I think traveler confidence with numbers would tell you that definitively. But yet, you know, you'll hear the back, you'll hear the, you know, well, don't be prescriptive in telling us what to do. It's like, well, no, I'm not. I'm not. I, I'm telling you what the people exactly who travel do, exactly. and, and this is just common sense stuff too. But and it's kind of like, well, okay, so like, how can we get like collective thinking around things like that? Now, and I'm not saying that you do that forever. You know, the, one of the first things we could do is if we could kind of have those that thinking that in a pre-recovery mode, that's the way you think. Then you start shifting gears in the next phase where you start having, you know, it's like okay. Now we have vaccines. Now we have, you know, ability to kind of really corral, maybe corral the effects of the virus. But that doesn't mean that people are going to run out and travel tomorrow, like the next day and be like, oh, oh, now I'm all good. There might be a portion of people that will, but that won't broadly. You know, we've got this is an on long campaign we've got to, you know, go after here collectively to, to get an outcome. Yeah, what it, what it comes down to is it doesn't matter what you think. It matters what your customer thinks. Who's paying the bill? Yep. <laughs> yeah, and 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 you know, and it, we always, it said this too when I, you know, you know, work specifically on business travel marketplace. Like, you know, just remember, it's the company's paying the bill, and that's another thing too. Here, like companies with risk. Okay, so you know, we're, now we're we're talking a whole other type of risk management that has to be you know thought through. Yes. Yep. You know, can I can I really tell my employees where they? and where they can stay or who they can fly on. And, and it's like, well, I can tell them from a cost perspective, but can I, can I really specifically dictate the brand that they have to use or the hotel they have to stay? And I think, you know, it starts getting a little like, and as a company too, you know, I've got to make sure that I'm doing everything I can because look, people, there's still exposure, there's still risk. And, and am I giving people the option to travel for business now more, I mean, th these are like big, big kind of fundamental questions. And again, yeah. remember, our business travel is paying the bills. The company who has there has there has okay. there has been a shift, right? There, there's yeah. been a shift, and if you're still living in 2019, you're not going to survive as a supplier. Yeah. It, you're you're no. just not. And and the same thing goes because there's there very rarely do do huge consumer shifts like this happen in anyone's lifetime, yeah. and it happens in our lifetime. And if you're not going to shift to what the customer really wants, not what you think it's going to be, you're, you're going to have a bad time, you know, yeah. no, no, no doubt about that. So as what can travel suppliers do who want to be on the same page, how can they get involved with travel again? Yeah. So we're the way, what we're doing is a few things in the first phase of this um, right now, it's really about, we're asking people to join us, meaning there's really no, there's no cost. There's no, um, obligation other than just saying you're basically telling us that it's okay to include you in our community and we you know we're asking for your support and that's great that's that that's pretty much it at this point what we are putting together and we'll announce the participants in about another you know I'd, I'd say soon very soon um, a, a basically a group that's going to be a policy advisor group and, and what we're going to ask them to do is help with this prioritization process. Well, have, we have a framework for putting together to look at, you know, kind of the issues across the different sectors. You know, we just talked about, you know, IATA's, you know, campaign and what they're focused on. It's like, how do we integrate that into more of an industry-wide campaign? And then have this group, which will be, uh, I'm kind of thinking of it as like, it's a little bit of like a Noah's Ark. You know, I want two airlines and two hotels and two cars. <laughs> it's like, we'll get, we're going to get, try to get a coalition together of folks have them all participate in that prioritization process and then go back to the industry and say, Hey, here's, here's what, here's what, here's our thinking. Let it run it through a filter with uh, with a medical expert or two mm -hmm. and say, okay, now here, here's, here's what we would suggest to the industry and then get, then really start to, to look at how can we affect policy? How can we affect uh, industry standards? How can we get leadership across the industry to say, you know, also again to to say, okay, I'll, I'll you know I'll consider this as part of my process. We'll get that going. 
we'll get our traveler confidence index, the measurement system in place that we'll share broadly with everybody that'll the industry. And then, um, you know, and then a bit of my, my, uh, from my experience, we'll go back to where can we either, well, we'll do a few things. We'll, we'll work very closely with all the trade associations because they've got resources in place. They've got lobbying firms in place. What can we do to help prioritize the key set of initiatives and get, see who we can get behind all of those. But if we do find that we need, um, we need some funding for some lobbying efforts uh, that we that will help, and again, important, not compete with or not take away from what's being done today, but enhance what the industry is doing, then we'll look to kind of help get some community support uh, for funding that and then go from there. You Before travel again, you were with GBTA, correct? Yep, nine years. Nine years. What did you do at GBTA? Uh, executive director. So ran the association and started back. So my timing is I came in in 2009. So right at the uh, the low point of another, you know, uh, these, uh, these, these catastrophes are happening much sooner, like in the decade, yeah. right? Like we did 9-11, yeah. then a few years later, we did the Great Recession. And then, you know, we had uh, there's right. numerous others. And now look at like, Fucking we're, you know what? I will say we're a resilient industry. We're a resilient species. And yeah. I, I, I'll say, I say this all the time and I'll say it again. We survived the plague. We will survive COVID-19. We will. Yes. Yes. I, I have talking no about doubt. the travel industry, right? Eric? Yeah. I mean, just uh, in general, you know, yeah. I know it, this is focused on travel, but yes, our industry will survive. It's going to be different. If you're thinking that it's going to go be the way right. that it was, no, it's not, but it's, it's going to be different. And, and, that happens with all these volcanic shifts in, in the world. Well, I, so a few things there too. I mean, you know, you, you read some of the prognostic, prognosticators going, oh, you know, travel's done. You know, it'll never be the same. We'll never have. I, yeah. I'm going to, I, I want to interrupt you real quick. I read an article in, when Bush was president, we were going to war in Afghanistan, and it said the SUV is officially dead. I think it was like the New York Times or it was Forbes or it was, yeah. and I'm sitting to myself, I'm going, and this is when I was like young and naive. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of like old and naive at this point, but like I was really young and really naive. I mean, oh my God, the SUV is dead. I ran into my dad's office. I'm like, dad, there's an article. And again, it was like on in some really well-known prominent magazine. And, and my dad's like, just g give it a couple months, yeah. right? Because gas went up to four dollars a gallon, right? Or gas yeah. went up to five dollars a gallon, oh, yeah, and no. everyone's like, "Oh my god, the SUV is dead! Bury the yeah. SUV! Everyone yeah. get back into." That's when the hybrid craze came out, right? When yeah. when we all ran to get Priuses and shit. But like, um, I'm 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 kind to keep that same thing that my dad you would say be like, just wait, just have this patience, too, and this wait. too shall pass. This too so, shall pass, right? So here's here's the here's the fundamentals that we should all focus on. One is we're uh, Tarek's point. We're we're social beings, um, for business and for pleasure. It, for business, the business will always be done. Uh, it, it have to involve face to face. Uh, it's it's how we build relationships, how we maintain relationships, how we do the business, um, and and so that part of it. Fundamentally, socially, we need to do that. That's how we build. That's how you build trust. You, you can. There's only so much you can do uh, over Zoom. Yeah, yeah, but but if you know, if we would have met, you know, at the GBTA convention, and we would have went out to dinner, I mean, our relationship would be so different. Or that's if true. us running into each other at the Starbucks, at the Lowe's, like that's when the magic happens. Mm -hmm. That that's when the relationships get created, and it's very oh. hard to do that in a scheduled world you know what i'm going to be the devil's advocate here and i'm going to kind of go against the grain of what you're saying the three of us need social interaction but i've seen a huge difference in our children i don't know how old your kids are mike if you even have kids i but a lot have, of you have a lot of kids okay i have a 12 year old boy and an eight year old girl you have, <laughs> you have seven children you have seven children yeah Gonna buy you. god bless you yeah i mean i i, I, I we want to stop at one they're like, ah, we'll figure out too. And then we were like, we're done. God bless you, man. I mean, you know, you should, you should watch a little TV at night. <laughs> <laughs> you know, start watching TV at night and stop Net making Netflix. Babies. Yeah, yeah. Just get we, join we Netflix. Are you, are you done or are you going for eight? You're going for the four. four? <laughs> well, I have everything from a nine month old to a 26 year old. So. Oh, my goodness. 
That's amazing. Yeah. God bless that's, you. That's Thank amazing. You. So you see, okay, so this is this is like the perfect segue. Like you see that the 24-year-old will probably really like social interaction, but the younger kids, my son, I'm like, Alex, you haven't really had like he's 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 had some friends come over the house, but they're sitting on their phones talking to each other. Yeah, but the new generation, this this young, I'm talking the young, 12 to 8, right? 12 yeah, there's, there's a range in there, maybe, but um it it they don't want to be social. They don't want to be social. They online do. They're, for they're, them. Social, they're social in their online, own way. Online. Online. Let social. me tell you something about – hold on one second. Let me tell you something about your son, Michael. Just wait until he gets interested in dating. <laughs> you, yeah, can't, you can't do that. You can't do that on your phone. Fingers, right. Yeah. You know, like you can't, you can't do that on your phone. And But then let's then say, okay, wait until he gets interested in money. It's, it's, this, it's the same segue, in my right. opinion, yeah. right. where – A little different. It's all – yeah, it's exactly the same, and and certainly you know very different than you know when we grew up or that our generation yeah. that for sure. But yeah, I, I look. I think there's that, and then on the leisure travel side, um, people. I mean, the desire to travel. Yes. I, just personally to go experience things is is not, I mean is, is it it is more than ever. I mean I I mean look look at what's happened since 2009. So so 2009. I come into the GBJ role and, you know, things are awful. Really awful. Right. Yeah. And um, we, we, we spent a lot of time really, really focusing everybody on the fact of like, you know, tr first same similar things, tracking, aggressively tracking what's happening. So you can benchmark and watch how it's going and look at the actions that you're taking and the industry's taking and what impact it's going to have. Um, but the big issues then were, the biggest driver of the recovery of the economy was international outbound business travel. And, and the reason for that was, you know, the, 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 the economy, like the U.S., let's focus on the U.S. U.S. economy was decimated, right, and flatlined, and no one could find growth. So you spent the first year doing all of your cuts, all of your layoffs, all of your reduction in workforce, cut, cutting every last thing you could. And unfortunately, also then in, the, in those environments, everybody cuts business travel. You know, like that, that it's it's deemed in that environment deemed an expense. Everybody just cross the line out. Nobody's traveling, but not spending any money. Okay, and then you're done. Then the public companies, particularly, but all companies, the private, the fund, however funded, you know, everybody's shareholders, and everybody's got to grow. And if you're not growing, you're dying. So it's like, well, I can't cut my way to success. So now I got to start growing. My I can't find like business here, so I'm going to look anywhere in the world. That that recovery driven the way it was was the real actually what happened was it drove the globalization of our society amazing period right and it was because those business travelers started going to places that they never traveled before so what came with that though interestingly was a higher risk profile because again it wasn't you weren't a company and you're were, remember the days when companies would be oh my top 10 destinations are these cities and it was very predictable and you'd actually, when you traveled, you'd likely met somebody from your company on the other end of the trip. And it was like very, there was a much more controlled environment because, you know, we didn't have, you know, these weren't what they are now, right? So you had, it, the, whole, the whole thing was different. This time around, right, with all the factors, you know, you're sending, companies are sending people at every corner of the world if it meant you found business, right? You're setting up new relationships everywhere in the world. The, the, public policies that were being created were about globalization and opening up economies. And, you know, and then, it, and then also during that same time period of that growth, China was growing so fast with travel and with business and their economy that they surpassed the U S as the largest business travel market. So China, which was, you know, 90% domestic China market because of mm -hmm. policies, but, it was booming and they were, and, but the, their outbound international numbers kept growing as well. Right. So what's the status, what's the status of China now? Uh, they're still the largest, but really? you know, but, but, but relatively, but we're, I'm wait, you know, new figures have to come out and be curious to see what that, that, where that's come. And a lot of countries that were really on growth path, India, et cetera, that, that were growing rapidly and at the same rate, we're going to be, end up being in the top five business travel markets. You know who knows now, right? Everything's everything's been reset. So how but, do you think we can correlate what happened in 08, well, 09 to twenty one, twenty two? 
Yeah, so what what I would say is once we – I'll tell you what's the same and what's different. So what's the same is once we get to the starting gate on recovery, which we won't be until, again, middle, second, third quarter next year, hopefully, um, then we'll start – then we'll have – We'll have be tracking, trying to drive a, a similar China recovery curve. But the place we're coming from is much deeper, so it's going to take longer, and it's going to. But but again, we also, as an industry, and maybe as a you know, maybe totally as a as a society, I think the global the roots in globalization are so strong that even the short term kind of more nationalistic, but you know, borders are shut, we're taking care of our own kind of mentality. We'll have to shift again because again. We'll need to find that business again, and we'll need to go anywhere to get business again to start growing revenues and start a recovery. So you're going to have a sim. It'll be, it won't be exactly the same, but I think we'll have a similar kind of recovery path to go through, like we did then. The difference this time around is that there's so much pent up leisure demand that that yeah. might, that might accelerate faster sooner. Right? Yeah, because I agree. What I'm also seeing on the travel supplier side, especially, you know. It's it's going to be a rough year from now, right? Yeah. Because banks aren't for there's no more forbearance. Ins insurance companies want their payments, and that's you know a huge expense for any travel operator. Yeah. And you know you need you still need people to handle the work that you do have because you, you but you're not making any money. So this time period in travel is really going to separate the winners and the losers, unfortunately, because I think there's going to be a lot more mergers. There's going to be closings, especially if you're on the smaller side of things where you don't have access to the same thing that the larger companies have have access to. And, you know, I hope to God that the government can get their act together and they can get another round of, of uh, PPP going. But this, this is the hard period coming now. I think from what we've seen, everybody cut, but they, they hit bone. So now what? Yeah, we got. I think to your point, we've got a. a unfortunately, we have a hard one in our head. Yeah, and I, think, and, I, and I think we again back to looking after our own. I think we should. Another reason we need to pull together as an industry, and try to try to do whatever we can to keep the the entire travel system in place as much as we can, uh, to m make it through to the, you know see to live, live to see another day until we can get to a point at which you know we can start to see a real increase in the. Uh, in transaction levels. Do you Great. think, do you feel, I don't want to get too political, but do you feel the media is making it worse? Do you feel that media is scaring the public into not traveling? No, I think, I, you know, I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's um, they're, they're focused on, unfortunately, that they're focused on the, the politics of all of it. I mean, it's because they have to. I mean, they're, look, they're, they're reporting what they're seeing, they're, the pulse of what they're seeing. They're, they're, I mean, that is, you know, the focus. I mean, I, I, Look, I, I, Eric, I, I've heard you say this before. I mean, I, I don't know how wearing a mask got political. I, I, I don't understand. Um, it, this is this is just fundamentals about you know how do you basically even if you don't care for yourself, but it's for everyone around you. That's the point. Yeah. Um, I, you know, like we're we're like everybody's human. I, look, I forget my mask. You know, when I get to the grocery store like everybody else, and you have to turn around and drive <laughs> drive home or or get a get a paper. You know, do it. I mean, look, it's not that it's the, the, how did this become like a statement? I mean, about anything, but just what can we do collectively all together to try to, you know, keep this on, keep this contained to the best we can. I mean, we've all had people impacted by this, you know, um, in a very tragic way. And it's like, uh, you know, I just, I just don't know how you don't have that empathy in this environment. And as it, as it applies to our industry, I mean, we, we absolutely have, we like, if we, if we can't rely on everyone to do that, which obviously we can't, then we have to be ever vigilant because we got to try to protect everybody once they're in our, in our world, right? Once they've, you know, left house and with an intention of going on, uh, you know, traveling, we, we have to take over and do our best as an industry to, to, you know, lower the risk. Now, having said that, I will say a Take a line from I don't know if you remember Administrator Pistol from TSA, uh, called, you know, about three three um, uh, three administrators ago, mm -hmm. but it was great. And he brought a he brought a real sense of uh, uh, you know he did a great job and, and he and as others have, but he did a really great job of bringing a sense of of uh, 
I don't know, I'd say um, pride to TSA at a time when they were really struggling. And he he brought, he was 25 years with uh, with FBI. He brought kind of a real different mentality to what they did and how they did it. But he used to say, if you want zero risk, stay home. And he was battling the peak of terrorism scare mm-hmm. and the impact that was having on our industry. I, and, like we don't talk about ISIS anymore. Right? Yeah, I remember right. being scared about going over a bridge yeah. saying this thing is going to get blown up or if I'm in New York City. Man, I'm, that's, going, isn't that like, crazy? We, we don't talk about yeah. ISIS anymore. Now it's the – like the news doesn't even bring up ISIS or terrorism yeah. anymore. They were catching terrorists weekly in New York. Right. Oh, another guy with a van with a bomb. Is it? Did it just disappear? Like, do people not bother with that anymore? I, I don't know. I don't yeah. want to get the terrorists. Don't want to get sick. They don't want to get yeah. COVID. Yeah. You know, it, it, interesting times. I mean, I I was um, I had the honor of being on an advisory group working with TSA. So that's how I got to know him and and uh, and working on PreCheck actually the the formation oh, of PreCheck. PreCheck. Yeah. Love PreCheck. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And, uh, and, you know, and had to get my clearance and, and man, I'll tell you the things they deal with. I mean, I got, would be in briefings and what they told us when we were getting our clearance, they said, you know, you're going to hear things that you wish you didn't hear. Like it's, really? it's so much happier. Ignorance is bliss is a, you know, that, that you don't, you don't hear about the threats the the, you know, that they deal with every day that we'll, we'll never hear about. And thankfully we'll never have to because you've got real real professionals, you know, taking this on. Right. And, um, but you know, he would say that all the time. And I think that's the kind of thing we'll have, we'll have to get back to that again, you know, in a, in a recovery mode where we'll say, you know, this isn't going to be perfect. You know, you, you, you travel, you're going to have some risk and heightened risk. There's no question, but what can we do as an industry to really try to tackle those issues be, be our own best advocates go as a total industry. Let's go take it on and put our best thinking against it. You know, don't let's not, we don't have to rely on necessarily on government to do it. And to your point about media, we can, we can certainly do a better job in trying to get the media messages out about the things we are doing mm-hmm. the things that really matter and, and have some hard facts behind it to show like how it is helping with, perception, how it is helping with actual outcomes. Um, and, and then own up to the times when, you know, we don't get it right. Mm-hmm. Okay. You know, we're like everybody else. Right. But I, I look, people, people want to root for us because again, people want to be able to travel again. They do. They really do. I mean, man, I, I don't talk to everybody. I talk to friends, colleagues, everybody. I mean, are like, wow, I can't wait for the time when I get to actually go have a business dinner again. You know, I don't know if you saw on Facebook, but Kevin Yamoto made a post on Facebook and he, it was like, I got kind of choked up and he was like, I unpacked my bag, you know? And he's like, I don't know when the next time I'm going to travel again. And you know, I, in my closet, I have my bag and I pass it every day and it's still the way that it was. And I know yep. the, the Tylenol is expiring and, you know, I got yep. to put in new toothpaste, you know, like every, as a business traveler, you got, everyone has that bag, right? They have the electronics yep. bag and they have their bag yep. where, where their clothing and stuff just sits and I'm still holding out, you know, I'm, I'm keeping everything there and people want to travel there. There there's, there's no doubt about it. And, and leisure, you know, Michael and I can't wait to go back to Disney world with our kids. Yeah. And you know, it's, yeah, it's we still, shame. as a family, I mean, we still talk about the trips and things we did like yep. we got in right before all this happened and unknowing, you know, that, that not knowing that this is all, you know, it wasn't like we, uh, you know, had any, uh, uh, but last fall, the, the trips we took and things we did, I mean, it's like, wow, you know, you look back now and you're like, wow, that seems like a lifetime ago. Eric and I, Eric and I were on an airplane every three weeks for all of 2018 and all of 2019 and the beginning of 2020, I wasn't able to go. I was dealing with vertigo, but, um, Eric, uh, the, and every other three weeks we were, tr- were traveling with our family. We were going somewhere with our family. Yeah. We primarily go down to Disney because, um, our children, all four of our children have allergies and, you know, we, we, we trust Disney and who the hell doesn't yeah. love Disney world. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it just, I, we talk about it. We can't wait to go back, but I don't see when this is going to, I don't know how we're going to get out of this. I don't see when it's going to happen. I just read an article today. Again, I don't want to get all like, you know, newsy and everything, but 
they said that they're they're experiencing horrible side effects of this covid shot yeah it's like all right, you just you, you're taking us ten steps back. We took three steps forward to try and get this. You can't take one. Them. You can't take one headline. You know, you you have to look at the whole picture, right? Sure. It's like it's like in business, you can't go one day at a time. You have to look at the whole month, and then hopefully it's you know tracking up, right? So I feel like that's the same thing with the news. It's all going in the right direction, and definitely what I see is the cheap rapid testing has to come out. Right. Like we're researching that for our company, for our employees, where, you know, that, that it's becoming a requirement. So we're waiting for that to really hit mainstream. Yeah. And um, obviously the airlines are going to be first with that. And then it will trickle down to the rest of us. Yeah. And then um, and then a vaccine has to come out. And and like everything else, maybe not everyone's going to get it. But the perception that there is a vaccine out there will ease fears, I believe. And yep. then ho hopefully, like you said, Mike, it's going to lead right into middle of next year. But, you know, when, when you look at it that way, it's it's in a blink yep. Com compared to February 2020. I mean, Mike, I we were we were in our we were in our office and we were like, we'll be back. We'll be back within a couple of weeks. You know, we'll be back within a couple of weeks. Easter e e after Easter. Easter. That's, it should be all yeah. over by Easter. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, it just it, we're, we're, it's October yeah. and it. I do believe that after the election, you will see a massive shift. So, something's going to happen one way or the other because, you know, everyone's saying, like you said, second and third quarter, we won't be able to last till second or third quarter of next year. I, I don't know if any other travel companies out there have this sentiment, but like as a company, who who's going to last? Till next year, there won't there won't well, be it, it, it. Literally, like I don't want to like scare everyone, but Mad Max took place in twenty twenty one. Okay, <laughs> Mad Max the movie. So like, you know, yes, next year's twenty twenty one. Who, you know, we have to get. It's got okay. It was it, everyone was off for six months. You know, September came. There was a little uptick, and now people are saying, no, it's not going to happen until the end of next year. It's like. When what are we gonna even be getting back to the end yeah. of next year? Who's gonna have a job the end of next year? Well, that's and that and those are the and, and again the really really difficult trade offs. But back to again, I, all of us as so let's take let's come down to what we can do, right? We we all in these roles in this industry have an opportunity. I guarantee you, if we collectively pull together, set some priorities together as an industry. You know, really try to focus on this, you know, more of a rising tide adding to towards. You know, I want, I, I, I'm sorry. I have to interrupt you. I have to interrupt you real quick. We got on with our top clients and it yeah. was our responsibility. It was, it was BLS's responsibility to get on and say, listen, these are the protocols we put in place. This yeah. is what we're going to do to make you guys feel safe. And we definitely saw an uptick, right? The, right. You know, obviously right. April and May, right. it was horrible. March, April, May, it was horrible. Then June, it was a little bit. And then July, it was definitely a recovery. Then September was another level up. Um, but when we asked about corporate travel, they literally blew spit at us. Like, it's corporate travel? Like, don't even think about it till 2021. You know, we're, we're three months. Well, no, it's really two months, right? It's November and December, right? I'm yeah. considering October's over, right? Just want to get yeah. past this goddamn election. Once the election's over, Literally, it's got to be a Band-Aid. The Band-Aid has to be ripped off and everyone's got to get back to the way it was or I don't ever see us or getting at least, back to at the way least, it was. At least it has to start in that direction. I, I, yeah, I'd say, I'd say it differently. I, I think, again, I think there are things we can do to basically keep people safe, keep the risk level at an appropriate level and build build back. The, the key is we, we can't have a get into a situation where we go too fast and then have to shut down again. Yeah. I mean, in any of the I sectors, agree. Right. that would be devastating beyond where we are. Right. You're right. absolutely so, right. So we have to be smart about it. We have to do the things that can manage that risk through the process until we can get to a point where we can really make a dent in this, you know, and, and, and create an environment where, you know, we can really start coming back in terms of what, businesses can afford. And I think where you're getting that reaction about business travel is because things are so bad for, for a lot of companies in most sectors that they can't even envision yet having the money to, to spend. It's like right. business travel 
is a key you know investment in growing your business that you know, business travel drives business growth right we know that but if you're hurting so bad that you don't have the money to even buy the tickets to put people on the planes to go get the business it's like look that's where a lot of companies are at and that's why you get that reaction but at some point it's like that and that's why it takes these cycles because you have to earn a bit see the roi of putting people out there yep. then you get some more business and then you keep reinvesting keep doubling down it's like okay growing growing and that's why you see those acceleration curves like why it comes back tends to really come back like that where you, it builds it leisure is a little different or you know, is different but the other thing about leisure now is so many people having been out of work for so you know and for so long and being impacted and still more of that happening it's hard because it's not whether i wa want to travel to costa rica you know it's like it's like, do I have the money? I mean, it's just binary. If I don't have the money to go on vacation, I can't, you know, I mean, I want to go to Disney World, but even if they're open, but I'm out of the money, you know, it's not the point. So, I mean, you do have some of that, you know, you have all these different factors at play, right? So it's not, it won't be pretty, but again, it can, we can, we can do ourselves a lot of favors and favor as an industry. And we can do, we can certainly, and again, it's looking after the customer building on their trust, you know, making sure that we're doing all the things across the industries, the handoffs between, the, you know, what nobody's even addressing, like the handoffs between the airlines and the rest of the travel community and how that's happening and what things could we be doing to build confidence about those interactions between mm -hmm. the sectors. I mean, there's, I'm sure there are some things we could be doing that would be the old low hanging fruit stuff that we could do that would really help. And then people would say, Hey, look, you know, the perception that, these guys, everyone's looking after me during my travel experience, right? Um, the more that we can do. And then, you know, you hear this too about, you know, re-engineering how we do it, the cost structure, the, the labor and everything. Right. Yeah, okay, kind of, no doubt, right? But right now, it's, we're still in triage mode. We, we've got to be doing right. that, that really just helps the industry, period. And, you know, those things over time, sure, yeah, we'll, we'll get there, but right so now, that's where we are. For all the travel suppliers listening, where can they go to sign up to join yeah. so your, it's, your project? Yeah. It's travelagainproject.org. Just go. It's easy. You join. Um, we're doing, we'll be doing a lot of outreach uh, throughout the industry. We're asking people, you know, as we get this first group appointed to help with the policy issues, we're asking all the companies involved, just go because when we start getting to the you know, the, let's say the policy part of the equation that's coming. I mean, here in the U.S., you said about the election. So it's really January, um, January, February, when, you know, it's like kind of back for business. The table's reset in terms of, and no matter who wins, it, it, there's always a resetting of the table of who's in the roles in the various uh, um, agencies, who's in the roles in the leadership uh, in Congress gets always uh, shifts. And so you, you got to go, it's almost like a do-over, Everybody's rushing in with their requests, but so if we have our collective act together as an industry, we have a better shot of pushing, getting things addressed and up the priority list where they should be. Because you know, I can logically tell every, I could say to every industry, our industry should be right at the top of the list because it helps yep. every other industry. But you know, that's a hard that logically yes, but practically you only you got to muscle your way into to get. Right. Well, we are happy to be a part of it. And, you know, when we connected, it wasn't even a question of whether that we were going to be involved or not. And we yeah. wanted to do our part Great. of ha having you on our show, spreading our message. And if anyone else is interested in joining, please do so. Find Mike, uh, find Mike McCormick on LinkedIn, share his post, find travel again on there too. That's where the large majority of the travel industry lives. Share and, and let's bring awareness to this project. And hopefully you can hit the right people where we can become united as an and, industry and, and pray for the eagles hey we're in first place are you we're, really we're one two and one and we're in first place <laughs> i think that says a lot about the nfc east as we, but it's but it's horrible it's <laughs> absolutely horrible hey, hey but saying that again classic i mean wentz and the, the 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 game the 49ers game i mean they 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 got their act together for for sure. prime time and look good and uh and they're fun to watch again they weren't fun to watch those first the rest of the season but what are your what, what are your what are your seven kids names oh my gosh so i've got Aaliyah, olivia sam and then uh 
Adriana, uh, Chase, Everly, and Dex. It's amazing. Do you have yeah. to like write that down? <laughs> I, yeah, I've got no cards. Hey, Chase, but, no, I'm sorry. I mean, Everly, Everly. Put this on your back. Put this on <laughs> your back. Uh, okay. it, it, I'm telling you, well, you know. No, I mean, that's so honestly, fun. you're you're rich in, in more ways than one. And yeah. that is the ultimate gift to have is, is children, especially when you put them to sleep at night. And, um, Mike, yeah. thanks for coming on, man. That was fantastic. We, we appreciate um, it. Everybody thanks, like, man. did you have fun, Mike? You had a good time? I did. Awesome. Uh, okay. everyone like subscribe, leave comments, share this with everyone in the travel industry, get the word out and go follow Mike McCormick on LinkedIn. Go be friends and travel, uh, travel again, project.org. And, uh, we're going to do the sign off right now. Mike, hang up one second. Sure. Bye everybody. Thank Bye. you. Guys.